What an honor it is to be here with you all. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being guardians of our water. They have to listen to us inside. Look at how many there are of us. So we stand here today together in solidarity with one another and with all of life in our area to say that water is a special, special, special thing in life. It's not a commodity that can be bought and sold on the work world market, no matter how many multinational corporations think that it is. It just isn't. And many of us here believe that's the case. So thank you for standing here together with all of us to safeguard our water. It's really important work. We, I'm from an organization called Wellington Water Watchers, but the truth is we are all water watchers and we need every single one of you to, to stand so that we can actually win this, and it is winnable. So, as many of you know, we have a multinational predator in our midst, and I feel really okay about saying that because I was just on a stage with Maud Barlow last week and she says it, and so it's totally okay if I say that. <laughs> Nestle has long suffered from a terrible global reputation. And many of us have not been swayed by the greenwashing of their talk of sustainability. But we now have a story right here in our county too that shows exactly what kind of corporation they are. So probably many of you have been reading the uh, headlines and over the last few days, there were a number of stories that showed what kind of company Nestle is. In Center Wellington, in Elora, just a little bit north of here, there is a well that Nestle is buying for in a little area called Middle Middlebrook. The, the property is called Middlebrook. Nestle undeniably has learned and heard the studies that the township and the people of the area know that that well is absolutely, essentially, beyond a shadow of a doubt, needed for the people and the life of Centre Wellington. There's no denying it now. It's in reports. Even scientists are in agreement on it. And what did Nestle do a couple weeks ago? They outbid the township for the property. This is who we are dealing with. So that's what they're up to. And and the powers that be, the governments that are supposedly, you know, in looking after our best interests, need a lot of pressure in order to actually look after our best interests. And that's why we're doing all of this. But as you probably also know, just south of here, there is another Nestle water taking. It's the largest in, in all of Canada. It's their headquarters. And they had a permit to pump water, which expired on July 31st this past summer. So as I mentioned earlier this week in a talk, I have a driver's license, and when my driver's license expires, if I'm caught driving, well, there's repercussions to pay. It's considered illegal. But what happens in our case here with Nestle, when their, experiment, when their permit expired, the, the Ministry of the Environment granted them an indefinite extension. So they can pump indefinitely <laughs> until such point as they can, uh, I don't know, get adequate to show that there are actually troubles there, which we know there are. We've known it for years. And I'm sure also that many of you have seen the overwhelming media attention that we've been getting over the past yeah. couple of months. It's been incredible. Yeah. And it's an indicator also that the tides are turning. We've been at this work for a really, really long time. And we've always known, when we started it in 2007, all of a sudden, 8,000 people made a comment on the Environmental Bill of Rights to oppose the Nestle renewal in Aberfoyle in 2007. It, we hit into a groundswell, and people we know are on our side. But at one point, that was still maybe only a percentage of the population. What's happened now in recent media, and the media is testimony to it, is that we are now not the minority. We are the strong majority and probably the strong majority all over the world that understand that this type of practice cannot continue. The editorial cartoons of painting Nestle and the powers that are allowing Nestle to get away with what they're doing as, as guilty. The courts of public opinion are out and, and they're guilty and now we just have to keep up the pressure and keep them understanding that we're not going to back down on this. responding to this pressure. We, there's been lots going on in the media lately of her actually standing up and taking notice of this. She is right when she says that ne Nestle's permit to take water and bottle almost 2 billion liters of water every year from this region 
was never contemplated 30 years ago when the rules were actually originally designed for the permit to take water. It wasn't even imagined that that could be a possible usage. Premier Wynne is right when she says that the rules have to change. Premier Wynne is wrong when she says that all we have to do is raise the fees and the government charges for it. That's not the solution. The Ontario government must stop the practice of granting water-taking permits to private companies for bottled water, period. Yeah.